Hey everybody, Scott Kelby here with our very special guest, one of the co-founders of The Grid. What? <laughs> <laughs> Matt Kloskowski. I didn't know I was the a co-founder of anything. Dude, you were the co-founder of The Grid. We started this thing over six years ago oh, now. Yeah, that's crazy. And I remember sitting in an office talking about this. We ought to do a photography talk show, something different. And, you know, where we're not, like, just doing tutorials like yep. we always do. And we could talk about stuff like we're going to do today is a per an exact example of why we created The Grid. Because today we're talking about the plug-in industry and all the upheaval and the things that are happening and all the new competition and the new stuff it's pretty crazy there's a lot of stuff going on so there is a lot of stuff uh, going on it's gonna be a great show um we're, we're very excited uh but the big news of course uh today is the announcement of the worldwide photo walk uh competition winner and um when i show you haven't seen the winners I no one, no one has no, it's, no. it's I'm, super I'm secret to it. but uh, i'd like you to I, i'm going to tell you why i like some of these images and i'd love to hear your opinion as well okay i can tell you they're all good images <laughs> they're all good so you're not going to go i really don't like that one i mean <laughs> no, they're, all, that's they're, all, they're all they're all they're all good images um that's what makes it so hard i wrote a whole thing about so my blog will release in just a little while here and i and i explain the judging process um it, it's very hard to judge like images from all around the world and also not be swayed by like, ooh, that photo's a place I've always wanted to go to. Yeah, yeah. Or that photo's exotic and I'm from Florida, you know, stuff like that. So it's very hard to, it's the judging thing, it's just hard. It's very, very hard. And you get down to where I got down to 18 photos and I'm like, I can't cut any of these. I just can't cut them. But you have to. And it's, it's very, very hard. So uh, That's a good point, though, dude. That the, uh, you, like, think about, think about Antelope Slot Canyons. Yes. Ten years ago. You and I both considered that like the amazing Ooh. of amazing photo. Yep. And then because we've been there, it you you could see how that could slip past uh, a judging contest because we're like, oh well, you know, I've been there, so yeah. it's like there, there I've never a, been here though. That looks awesome. There was a time where an Antelope Canyon slot would win every yeah. every contest because nobody went there and it was so unusual. Now that everybody goes there, you're like, oh, Antelope Canyon slot. Yeah. It doesn't so, make the photos any less beautiful. No, it doesn't. But it's just you're you're not yeah. you know so you're sensitized. I, so I try to 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 be really open and and try not to sway in that in that way. Uh, and but I will tell you this: I have one thing I've learned from judging this and many many other photo contests is great photos jump right out at you. Yeah. Like you don't have to spend a lot of time on your first pass because good photos you're like, ooh. Uh. Uh, yeah. Uh, ooh. I mean, they, they do. They, they literally <laughs> yeah. jump right out at you. So uh, we're going to start off today with, with announcing the winners. Uh, we have 10 finalists and then a grand prize winner. The finalists actually get a really nice uh, little, little um, what's the word I'm looking for? Prize? Prize package. Thank you, Matt. No problem. I, I co-founded the show. I, I, oh, yeah. I Feel can free. hang with that Feel stuff. Feel free to hang it, dude. You're, <laughs> you're hanging. All right. The finalists get a Think Tank Photo Trifecta 10 DSLR bag. They get a Platypod Ultra with a multi-accessory kit. They get a year of the Adobe Creative Cloud Photography Plan. They get a $50 gift card from B&H, a $50 gift card from Westcott. They get a $50 certificate off of any Drobo in the Drobo store. They get a... And a one-year full membership to Kelby One Online Training. So all of the... The finalists get that, and then the prize winner, the grand prize winner, I'll list those when we get there. Okay. But I want to take you through, and uh, I want to take you through the finalists. So let's go ahead and go to my screen here, and we're going to go through. These are the 10 finalists. So these are the people that won the prizes that I just told you. They're from all around the world, and you're about to see some really good prizes. Uh, really great stuff. So if we can go to my screen. Oh, I'm not on there? Oh, current. Hold on. Hold on one second. Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't make a sound. And I'll say when, don't go yet. Does she have the signal? You're on. Okay, there we go. All right, so here are the 10 <clears throat> finalists for the 10th anniversary. You know, it's been 10 years. Here we go. The first one is from Tom Van Rosendahl from Apple, Apeldoorn, Netherland. And, uh, you know what I love about this picture? There's a number of things I love about it. But number one, it looks like a painting. I mean, just straight up, it looks like it looks like a painting. And I love what really, I love the colors. I love the placement of the, is that what, a mushroom? Yeah, it looks like it. Right? But the little water drop yeah. <laughs> to the left, that just kind of took it over the top. It was just like, you know, that is really, really nice. And, you know, if these were critiques, I would go, well, there's a little stem in the bottom corner and all. Yeah. But I'm looking for the overall impact. Yeah. 
this is a beautiful photo. And I try to get photos that I would think, you know, when I put this on my wall, I would frame that and put that up here or hang it in the gallery or whatever. I think that's a beautiful photo. So congratulations to Tom Van Rosendahl, uh, who walked in the Appledorn, Netherlands. All right. Next, this is a really cool one. Check out this shot. <laughs> so this is from Alex. Make sure I say this right. Alex Markin Kofia. Is it Alex or Axel? I'm sorry. It is Alex. Axel. Sorry. It's Axel Marinkovia. <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right. From the Metropolitana Chile walk. And my first thing I want to know is, why is there only one glass in the goggles? <laughs> Number two, is this someone from the photo walk? Is this someone in a work environment? I love, look at the lighting. The light, I was just going to say the lighting, lighting like on this looks. shot is just spot on. And the post-processing. Mm -hmm. Look at the nice texture on the skin. And it's not overdone. And I saw... Uh, Matt, I saw a lot of very, I saw that HDR that burned your eyes. I saw a lot of that stuff. But I, I just think this is a really interesting, I love a shot when you want to know what the story is. Yeah. When you see a shot and go, so what's he looking at? Where is this place? Is this a factory? Is this at the mall? Like, what is going on? Where's the metal stuff in the background? Why is he wearing goggles? Why is there only one? It this, looks like photography equipment or something, doesn't it? I don't it know what like it is. Light or it, like a movie? Like movie, like a, yeah, yeah, like, like a, a movie Something set. on a movie set. But anyway, I, I just thought this was a really intriguing photo. I thought it was very, very well <laughs> done. And uh, that's uh, Axel from Metropolitana Chile Photo Walk. So congratulations, Axel. Uh, next, our next winner, this is, this is not going to be your average, this next one, your average photo walk shot. Uh, this is from Anne, I think it's Be Beckney or Benke, uh, from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And the first thing I would say is, High five for the route that your photo walk leader took, right? <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. I, and, but but beyond that, because I'm sure that that everybody in that walk took the same photo, right? Yeah. But look at the nice low perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's got it's a long exposure, but it's not too long. I mean, they didn't probably be yeah. an ND filter and all that stuff. That just looks like an F22 or something on an overcast day. But I just, I love the way it leads you into the, you know, it's a simple shot. It's nice color, beautiful color, uh, nicely post-processed. Um, I would probably straighten that horizon line just a dead. But I think it's a not very, very nice Yeah, I shot. like the orange in the foreground. So it was, uh, but yeah, the orange in the foreground is really, because yeah. without that orange in the foreground, I mean, we've all seen water waterfalls. That That's really what... It, it brings all the color out everywhere else in the shot, and I just I just think that's a beautiful shot. So congratulations to Anne from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on a very very nice shot. Next, here we go. This is from Rick Williams. Ooh. So this was taken in uh, to the Tucson, Arizona walk. Tucson had two different walks, and this one is from way outside the city, and. I, I don't know what the story is. I, I don't know, was it, was it a zoo? <laughs> or that's very close. Yeah. You're getting very close there. And it is, you know what's interesting? It's a very sharp shot, but at the same time, it has an overall softness to it. Yeah. Right? So I think it's, it's very unusual to, to see a shot like this from the photo walk. Even if it's from a zoo, like you normally don't get shots like that. I can't imagine from I, a I zoo. I don't think this was like yeah, walking yeah. down the street. I yeah, think, like, oh, wow, look. That's what I'm thinking is because it's so close and it's yeah. unobstructed. I'm thinking that that it is from a zoo. Now, maybe what, because it is sharp, but there's an overall softness. Maybe it was because they shot through glass. I yeah. really, really don't know. But anyway, I'm just. Just I, the lighting looks dramatic, yeah, too. Yeah, it's just, I, I think it's an awesome shot. It's one of the first wildlife shots. I don't I haven't shot a uh, uh, Awarded a lot of wildlife shots, but I, I thought Rick did a very nice job with this. The next one comes from Sele City in the Philippines. Jose Tan Jr. took this shot, and I, I think there's so many awesome things going on here. I think the color is great, mm -hmm. but I think these little girls and their color against the red, against the gray, and the scale, like, you know, the scale and the composition where they're way, way over to the side, but they draw your eye right to them. And part of it is there's that bright spot right above their head that draws you to the side where they are. But I just think this is, like, there was a lot of ways to compose this shot, and I think Jose did a really very nice job here. Yeah, that's solid. 
just that's a, that's a solid shot. Great texture, nice post processing. Didn't go too far with it. Uh, but went far enough to where you really experience the texture. I, well, I always wonder when I see these, I always wonder, did they walk up and that was happening? Or did they wait there for it to happen? You know, did, 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 yeah. they, see, did they see the color? Because it's, I mean, it's, it's perfect with all the, the gray and then the red. It just naturally makes, it would be a cool shot without the people. Yep. And then you wait for the person to come through. Or did they walk up and see it? Yeah. I always wonder. Yep. All righty. Let's take a let's take a look on the next one. The next one is from um, Sintra, Portugal. So I just thought this. I don't know why, yeah. but this it's a frame is just, of a it's a photo framing of a yeah, photo. Yeah, and like, I don't like photo frame shots, but this one I could not get rid of it. You yeah. know, like even when I, every time I did the cut, because there's there's so much depth to this shot yeah. because there's the area before the frame, then there's the frame. Then there's this odd looking little mini truck. Then there's another frame, another area, and then there's the, the bars, and then there's whatever's behind that. There's just a lot of depth here, and I just, and a lot of great texture and nice post processing. It's, it's really, really nicely done just all the way through. And as soon as I saw this one, I'm like, ooh, and it, it you gotta realize, like, I started off judging, like, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photos from all over the world, right? There were almost a thousand walks. Then I knocked it down to 119, then down to 88, and little by little. And every time you cut one, it is painful <laughs> because you you like these shots. And yeah. this one, every cut, it just kept hanging in there. And I just, I can't even tell you exactly. It's just, yeah. I would hang that. Like, I would, I just, I yeah. think, I love all the texture. And yeah. the colors work really well together. So, congratulations to Ruben Trindade. Ruben Trindade from the Central Portugal but I've, I actually went to Sintra when I was in Portugal, and it's a beautiful. We only, unfortunately, drove through the town. We didn't get to stop and eat there because Fernando would not let us eat. But uh, anyway, all right, so that's that one. The next one is from Munich, Germany, Walk, Jens Frank. And um, this is so interesting. It looks like, I guess, they're putting up a graphic or painting, or I'm not exactly sure. It looks like a graphic. But... Look at that. Isn't that a cool shot? Yeah. Boy, there's something you just don't see every day. You know what really makes it to the two ladders? I wish I saw stuff like this. I just don't see. I, I would have walked right past it. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have a single shot that I took during my photo walk that compares with these. And, yeah. and I, I had a really good route. It was chosen by, uh, by Chiki Nando, and he, he did a great route. And it's just, I do I'd like to visit a lot, though, on the photo walk. Yeah. I like to, uh, there you go. So let's see. All right, so that's, that was a nice one. And again, that is by Jens Frank from Munich, Germany. The next one is from a walk in Lambeth, England. And the finalist is Andrew Newman. So, oh, well, that, that has got a weird um, zoom there. Hang on a second while I fix this, because this, there's more to this shot. So give me just a second to figure out why that is showing up so weird. It's like it's... Okay, it's like it's been cropped. Hang on a second. I'll have to open it in a different program. Cool. Fit. That's, that is... Oh, it wasn't in fit? It was in no, it was in fill. Oh, that's maybe why. Now if I go here. There we go. All right. I got Lightroom course if you want. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Matt, Matt help me out here. <laughs> that gets a cat sound. All right. So... Uh, this was the one from Andrew Newman, and I'm, I, my apologies to Andrew because he's got a great shot there. Now, guys, we've all seen this long exposure stuff before, but this is really well done because you know what it is? It's not just the long exposure smudgy people on the white yeah. background thing. It's the placement of the tourists, like up in the left corner, and I believe this was taken in a train station. Really? I, I want to think it was in Paddington Station, but I thought this is, this is really well done. We've seen people do these experiments and stuff like that before, but this this is how it's done right there. I thought it was it was really yeah, really stuff like, again. That I I wish my I wish I had an eye that saw stuff like this. You know, I just never see it that way. Yeah, that's so well done. I get well jealous done. when I see work like this. I know. This, me I'm too. Like, oh, man, I want to do that. All right, this next one is from. I'm gonna have to. I'll see if I can say this. <clears throat> Chahar Mahal and Bakhtiari province in Iran. 
Iran had so many photo walks. Iran had like 19 photo walks. They had a ton. The Iranian photographers are all in. And this is the, the photo oh, wow. from Arash Sol Solmiani. And, and Solmani. Solomani? Okay, I'm sorry. Soli Arash Solomani, I think. It's as close as I'm going to get, and I'm, I'm sorry, apologies, my apologies in advance if, if I mispronounced your name, but I, I just, I love this shot. First thing, I want to hug her. <laughs> you just look at that smile. She has a smile. You just want to go down there and go, can I get a hug? Uh, that's number one. Number two, she owes Arash for wearing those great color combinations <laughs> for that, that blue and that green and all. And, and, but where I give Arash a lot of credit is that overhead yeah. Uh, view is just awesome. And she just looks, you know, just sweet as she can be. And it's just, I, I think it's a really arresting photograph. Very, 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 very nicely done. And I just, I think it's just, just a really, really yeah. wonderful shot. Definitely worthy of a, a finalist. We've got like, it, even the lines are, are, oh, are dude, work. Is, everything, well, everything works well for it. Yeah. This is a beautifully crafted photo. Yeah. It's really, really nice. So congratulations to Arash. The next one, we finally got another one back in the USA. From you can, we can pronounce the name too. Yeah, from Brook, from Brooklyn, from Brook, from Brooklyn, New York. It's from Saul Addison, and this shot. The more you look at it, the more you like it. So some of the things I like about this shot is no one's screaming. They all look just joyful. Mm -hmm. They don't look scared. They don't look like they're screaming. They look like they're laughing and having fun. But I love the post-processing. Now, yeah. see the fence in front with the barbed wire? That would usually be like an instant death. But for some reason, because of the angle of it, like it's angling down where the other thing is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it works in the whole geometric. There's a lot going on in this photo. Triangles. Like triangles work yep. in a photo. And yep. that has a lot of them. It, it does. And there is a timelessness to this photograph. You know, it doesn't look like a new photo. It doesn't look, you can't say this was taken this year, 20 years ago, 50 yeah. years ago. There's a timelessness to it that I think is really, really neat. And I just, I just think it is great. It's like all different people having fun together. And it's just, I, I just think there's a lot going on here. It's got that vintage -y style process to it, which is it, cool. It, it really does. And, and I know just, it's a great photo for it. Yeah, this is, yeah, it, it's like the post-processing perfectly fit yeah, like that wouldn't have worked on the last photo right so uh so congratulations to saul addison from the brooklyn new york walk thanks for representing the usa there only two of the 10 finalists for the usa and uh now it's time to go and look at our grand prize winner so our grand prize winner is going to win these prizes. They get a Canon EOS M5 mirrorless camera with an 18 to 150 millimeter, 3.5 to 5.6 IS STM lens kit from our platinum sponsor, Canon, and our friends at Canon USA. Thank you very much. Um, they also get a Canon Pixma Pro 10 printer. They get a Drobo 5D3 storage system, which is the same one that's sitting on my desk. But you don't, you don't actually get mine. You get a new one. They get a $250 B&H photo gift certificate. They get a Think Tank Photo Streetwalker rolling backpack. They get a $500 Westcott gift certificate. They get a Platypod Max and a Platypod Ultra and a Platypod Multi Accessory Kit. They get a full year of the entire Adobe Creative Cloud plan with all the apps every app and they get a full year of kelby one membership as well now the good news for the winner of this they're not from the united states but the good news is that they recently dropped the ridiculous tariff they would have had to pay yeah. a 90 percent tariff to win this <laughs> and they dropped it to zero within the last year so congratulations to our grand prize winner whose name is Oscar Cubas. Oh. <laughs> and this was taken in the Valley, Valley Paricio, Chile photo walk. And this photo came up, and I almost knew this, <laughs> this is going to win. Because there is so much amazing stuff happening in this photo. First off, look at the light on the little boy in the train. Yeah. 
You cannot ask for better light than that. Number two, the fact that the window is smudged so you can see uh -huh. at the exact, <clears throat> like right where you need to be. And look at the wonderful framing and the subtle colors of the, of the rail car and the, the dirt on the windows. I mean, there, and the, his expression is so awesome because it's, it looks like an expression that's like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah, Taking a yeah. picture? It looks like, but, but it's not an over the top one. It's all in the eyes. Right, it's not mouth gaping or like hey, or but it, or, but it, or mad either because no. that, that's always a problem too. I see yep. a lot of a lot of shots where people look mad. Yeah, no, this one's just kind of like, why would you take a picture of me? Are you <laughs> taking a picture of me? Or is it the train? And the placement in the frame is so spot on. It's just I really, really. I mean, I just fell in love, love, love with this shot. So congratulations to Oscar Oscar Cuevas. I'm thinking it is from Valparaiso, Chile, who is our grand prize winner of the 10th annual Worldwide Photo Walk. And we're gonna be sending you a whole bunch of fun stuff and you don't have to pay a tear. <laughs> so congratulations to Oscar and also thanks to all the winners. Now, this was the regular photo competition, but we have more competitions that we're gonna be met, uh, uh, releasing on Friday. So we have the our first teen competition. So the first time if you're, uh, not teen, it's a youth competition. Uh, 18 and under, we have a special competition. That's we cool. have a special competition just for people who shot video on their photo walk. Special competition, great prize. You know what they get? They get the Canon 80D video kit with the Rode microphone and the special lens for video. You've been all. doing that, for, has it been a couple of years you've been yes, added second video? Year. Yeah, second Yep, yep. So thanks to our friends at Canon for all of that. And uh, there's and we have the, um, the leader competition. We have our leaders coming, uh, competitions coming. So all the leaders, they don't get to be in this one. Mm -hmm. They get to be in their own competition, but there's great prizes for that. And there's also a, there's people's choice, leaders, video, and youth all coming on Friday. So I will not be sleeping between now <laughs> and Friday. So I'm anyway, very, very excited. Um, uh, Marcus Horster said, wow, beautiful shot. Congratulations to all the finalists and grand prize winner. Thank you, Marcus. We agree. Uh, hey, Martin said, that is one of those photos that gets an instant reaction yeah. when you see it. Doesn't it? It was really a standout photo. Like when I first saw it, I thought, wow, I wonder if that's going to win. You know what I mean? It was like yeah. so good that I'm like, I wonder if something will rise up to beat it. But oh my gosh, there were so many things that... Uh, that uh, that uh, you, it, it just, wow. Hey, uh, Chris Wiley says, I'm with you, Matt Kluskowski. I would walk by so many good photo ops thinking, what do they yeah. see there we're taking a photo for? Yeah. Hey, we're going to uh, look at some of your comments and, and welcome everybody and stuff after the break. We have a really good uh, topic today. When we come back from break, we're going to be talking about what's going on with plugins. And there's a lot going on with plugins. We got an interesting show for you. So tell your friends, go on Twitter right now on the break, especially if you're already a Kelby One member. <laughs> go and say, hey, come watch the grid because they're going to talk about plugins and stuff and make a bunch of people mad. So um, come, <laughs> come in uh, right back after the break. Uh, we're here with Matt Kloskowski from mattk.com. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramilly. I'm a French photographer living in Los Angeles, California. And in this class, I'm going to teach you Lightroom presets. Lightroom presets are amazing because they can do 80 to 90% of your entire retouching. When you have a lot of photos to retouch, it's so cool. In this class, I'm going to show you how to do presets on your own for sunrise, sunsets, black and white, Hollywood looks, day to night looks, retouching portraits, only at kelbyone.com. Check it out. Hi everybody, Scott Kelby here. Big news, we have a brand new version of Photoshop. It's Adobe Photoshop CC 2018. And I gotta tell you, Adobe packed in more stuff into this upgrade than I've seen them do in a long, long time. And there's stuff for everybody. There's stuff for photographers, stuff for graphic designers, stuff for Photoshop artists. And I'm gonna take you through every bit of it. We're gonna look at all the incredible new stuff and there is just a ton of it. Your mind is gonna be blown at some of the stuff they've done. Some of the math, some of the I, what these, how these engineers come up with this stuff, I have no idea. But that's not my job. My job is not to invent crazy stuff; it's to show you how easy it is to use, how to put it to use in your own work. We're going to do that right now. Go check out this brand new class exclusively at Kelby One. My name's Tim Wallace. I'm a commercial photographer, and I shoot transport all over the world. The 
what we're going to do is I'm going to shoot the runway, we're going to shoot and light the plane, and then we're going to put those two elements together and make a composite. I'm Tim Wallace, come check out my class on kelby1.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. We got oh counted. gosh, we're back. You, we're back. You didn't hear the count. Wow, I didn't hear the count, and I was <laughs> reading my, I was reading my my thing. All right, so um, hi, welcome back, Scott Kelby here with Matt Kluskowski from MattKate.com. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> All right. Well, we got some some comments real quick to read here. I just want to mention, hey, um, so I don't know what you if you've seen what Tony Northrup and Chelsea Northrup have been doing, but they're trying to raise money. Uh, to get clean water to Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico they're, yeah. they're struggling in Puerto Rico like you cannot believe. And so they've done this great thing. They're trying to raise $50,000, and they are literally at like 47000 and some change. So they have 10 of my books, 10 signed copies of my books. So if you'll go to this, this address, which the address is chuffed.org slash, slash project slash clean water for PR. It's clean dash water dash for dash PR as in Puerto Rico. Uh, if you go there, you, you can bid on all kinds of stuff, but they will, but they, we're trying to get to them. We're trying to help them get to $50,000. There it is. Look how close they are. Oh, wow. 47,845. Right, we wow. should check back in like a half hour and see. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, there's only 18 hours left in this, in this thing to hit the 50,000 and you know, we can make this easily and you know how much they need our help. Yeah. So and they, they actually went to Puerto Rico too. They, like oh, they, they went there they, themselves, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, they, they just right. got back from a trip there. So anyway, uh, uh, you can get a signed book, and you'll help them out. And I don't mean you'll help Chelsea and 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 Tony out, but they are uh, they are so awesome for doing this. But if you will if you will go there, let's see if we can get them to this fifty thousand. Not not just so they can say, hey, we reached our fifty thousand, because fifty thousand dollars will help a lot. So thank you guys in advance for going over there and checking it out. Uh, there's a there's a short link. That short link is so bad. So let's let's, <laughs> let's try chuffed chuffed.org. Okay chuffed.org slash project slash clean water for PR. You can also just go, if you go to, uh, if you go to my Twitter feed, scottkelby.com, there's yeah. a link to it there. So yeah, just go to the better place. Yeah, <laughs> just go to my Twitter feed, click the link, and, and please let us know. If you, if you send any money, just let us know here so we can give you a shout out on the show. So that's coming up. Um, also, just got lots of shout outs from great people here. Like, uh, let's see, Kathy Bateson said, hi guys, better tweet a reminder that the grid is on because our clocks went back last weekend. Oh, they have a, like a daylight savings time kind of thing. That's from our friend, Kathy Bateson. Hi, Kathy. Where's Kathy? She's Liz. from Ireland. Uh, okay. She's from, you know, she, she was part of our team Epic in, in Lisbon. Oh, cool. Yeah. And let's see, uh, Carl says, hey, Matt is back. Nice to see What's you and Scott Carl? behind the desk, my two favorite photographers. Aww, thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> Carl. Carl. All right. Hey, so we just heard, we just heard this right before on the break, that today is Dave Clayton's birthday. Now, had I known, and Dave you should usually gives me six months warning. <laughs> had I known, I would have like got a guitar out, would have sung a whole thing. Matt and I are going to sing it, and Juan's going to help, and Jen's going to help. Matt loves to sing. I do. That's... You think Matt likes to sing? <laughs> you should get Matt to dance, which is what he really wants to do. Oh, there he is. There he is. He says, hello, chaps. Great to see Matt in Las Vegas. So Matt, I don't know if you know this, when he's in Vegas, he dances with what's called the Thunder from Down Under, which is a male dance group. And he yeah. was doing a... Dave, Dave Clayton joined me that night. Did he? We had lots of laughs. He loves to dance. And <laughs> I, I think Matt was doing four days at the Excalibur there with the Dave, Thunder. Dave, I know what you're laughing at, by the way. Anyway, <laughs> let's, uh, let's sing our, our good, dear friend, Dave Clayton, a happy birthday. Here we go. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to Dave. you, to Dave. Happy, happy birthday to Dave. Happy birthday, Dave Clayton. Dave Clayton. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. We didn't just sing. We swayed. Watch, see him, Matt. We're like, happy birthday. We're swaying. <laughs> happy birthday, <laughs> Dave happy birthday, Clayton. Dave. And I'll have to tape record you something salacious later with a lot of guitars and amps. So there you go. All righty, let's see. Bernie Ryan says, hi, Matt. He says, I seem to be seeing you everywhere these days. Loving it. 
Thanks, Bernie. And Mark Rodriguez says, fun fact. Oh, I remember Mark. This is funny. He says, I was on the very first Worldwide Photo Walk 10 years ago with Hyde Park. Matt leading the walk down in Hyde Park in Tampa. And we almost got arrested by the rent-a-cops that day because I think they thought we were terrorists scoping out the place. Yeah. We yeah. did. We, like, we uh, had all the, all the rental police who were... Not happy with us, and luckily we had somebody from the TPD oh, Tampa on our Police photo on the, on the photo walk with us. That and helps, he, uh, and he shot the guards. Yeah, all right, tased so, them actually. So it wasn't I will bad. say this: I, I don't know how often when a terrorist wants to scope out a place that they send <laughs> 50 photographers. We yeah. need 50 people at once. They're usually a little sneakier. All right, <clears throat> and Rob Kennedy didn't like our song. Said. Don't give up the day job, guys. <laughs> Antonello says, better as photographers. Wow. <laughs> Cat sound. All right. Rabino Owen. Rabino Wen. Rabino. Hi, Rabino. Says, my photo walk is still in the camera. Rabino, you should have entered. Should have entered. Matt, the wombat Charnitsky says, I think there's glass in both eyes, but only one is angled to catch the light. That was he's talking the about that shot. Photo of the Matt, we thought I thought the same thing, but I zoomed in tight. No, yeah, it was. I don't think there's didn't any look glass like there. Was in anything there? Because I have the full high res image. I don't think so. Nan says hi. I haven't been able to catch oh, live for a while. Yay, Matt K. And then Chris Wiley says, I wonder what sound my photo got. It got this. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Steve Stephen Barnes says, Matty K in the house. Hi, Scott and Matt. And Mike Cabasi, Hollywood Cabasi says, looking good, boys. Dave Clayton's birthday is today. Well, now we know. Mike, where were you yesterday so we could have prepared? <laughs> Lena says, ciao from Roma, Italy. Special and handsome guest, Matt. Aww, thank you, Lena. Handsome guest. <laughs> Dave Clayton says, oh, shucks. Thanks, chaps. Well, thank you for not making fun of our singing, Dave. We were swaying. Did you notice the swaying? Happy we don't sway for just anybody. To you. All right. So uh, Just Jack says, hi from North Carolina. There were some really great photos from the walks. Yeah, there were. You can imagine how hard it was. All right. So we are going to talk uh, about plugins today. And uh, there's been an upheaval in the plugin market. We're, we've mentioned this on the grid already. But I think the biggest news to happen in plugins in at least a while is that DxO, of all people, of all companies out of nowhere, went to Google and bought the Nick collection has resurrected the Nick collection, downloadable for free from DxO's site, and they mentioned that they are going to release an update in 2018. Now, let's back it up. Beep, beep, beep. When Google first bought the Nick collection, what did I say on this very show just happened to be here about- Nick is dead? Yeah, well, I said there's no way in the world that Google bought the Nick collection because they the, want to get in the plug-in in business. The, in the photography, in the pro-ish right. enthusiast right. photography space. Like they didn't want, I said, there's no way they're going to like yeah. be in the plug-in business. And what kind of a rash of crap did I so, catch from Google? And so what people, a lot of people watching, because nobody would watch the show for six years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't mean it in a bad way. I meant like, no, I damn it. What people, wouldn't, what people wouldn't see is like, pe Google came on and they said, stop saying Nick is dead. Oh, remember yeah. Remember they used to say, stop saying they Nick is dead. They flew here. They came here, remember? Stop saying Nick is dead. And then we, and we all right, so they came on the show. Um, and you even said, you even said, uh, what was it? Uh, you, you, you mentioned that one of the persons should run, should be in politics. Because yes. of the way that they answered questions was was very, very non-committal right. in any way. So this was a different set that we're on right now at the time. Right over there. Matt sat on the old grid set with two people from Google. So Google sent two people here. Matt sat over there. And I sat on a little desk over here. And I just, I gave them so much. Ego. There's no way you can tell me. And they're like, no, no. And they, and they would never answer the question. I said, so there's going to be a Nick Collection 5? Nick Color Effects 5? Well... Google is very enthusiastic <laughs> about working with the photography to community to see what's next. That's how they would answer. Yeah, that's how you every know, question. We was. listen to a community, and anyway, it was. They went on and on and on, and honestly, they would not answer. And that's why I finally said, "Great answer, Senator," because you're just not. They wouldn't commit to anything whatsoever, and so they came to, to dispel the myth that there wasn't going to be. And yeah. they never, they never ever released Nick yeah. Color Effects Five. 
All they did in the entire time Google owned them was release what I would call a analog. us two analog thing that nobody cared about. Yeah. It really was just like, it was gone. So it was exactly what we said how many years ago now? Four or five years ago where we said... Google's well, going to do nothing with this. And that's exactly what they did, and they finally just cut it loose. So I, I would have lost money on this one. Cause, so I, I, and I just wrote a, uh, it was probably, I don't know, a few months ago, I wrote a blog post called Nick is Dead. Um, Nick is officially dead because once once they put that little once oh, they I, put that little notice up on the top dude, of the website, I put a tombstone. Yeah. I had a tombstone yeah. with Nick collection on it. So they once they put that notice on the top of the website, we will no longer be developing. And the, the writings on the wall, yeah, I, I get it. They still work, but in, for all intents and purposes, for for future, they're dead because they're oh, yeah. not. They're eventually not going to work, and they're not going to be supported. Um, and then what people I. And again, I'll, I'll take the, uh, I'll take full blame on this one. So many people would say, "Well, why doesn't somebody just buy them?" And I would jump in and I'd say, "Seriously, you think Google's going to sell Nick?" So I will totally eat my words. <laughs> I would have lost. So I would have lost, lost that bet. Lost big any time. bet on it. I did not see this coming. I didn't. I never in a million years did I think Google would sell. And we, me and I think you and I both sat there at lunch one day and said the only reason Google would sell would be out of good faith. Would be of okay. Yeah, well, just, yeah. we're not going to do anything with this. We understand. We've seen photographers love it. So let's go ahead and get this ready for somebody to maybe continue on and do something with. And because I don't think whatever the amount of money was. And I don't know what the amount of money was. I, I don't think it makes a difference. Like I don't to like Google. Yeah, because I think people kind of maybe Google misinter- makes their own money. Yeah. And I think people misunderstand the the this photography space, this DSLR photography space, is not the the software companies in it. The the on ones, the Nick or not the Mac funds, the yep. DXO. They are not billion dollar companies. These are these are tens of millions of dollars, which is a lot of money, but it's not like right. none of them can afford to pay Google enough money that Google would sit back and go, oh, wow, maybe <laughs> we should consider this. You know, it's, it's so not, let me ask you a question. Why did Google even let it go? I, I, you, you said it to me at lunch. I think good faith. I think that Google I, was finally at the point where it, it was it was turning bad for Google that they were just sitting on it. Like, yeah. everybody was unhappy. Everybody's complaining to Google, why won't you update it? Why won't you maintain it? Because here's what the problem is, and this was happening. We just had a Photoshop update. We just had different updates. It, it, it's breaking the plug-in on certain, not everybody's, but I have people write me in that says, now that I've updated to the new Photoshop 2018. Just wrote it in up there. Oh, did they say it? Where is it at? Oh, oh it was somewhere. Oh. I think it might be gone All now. Right. But. Well, so, yeah, somebody wrote. Or, but I've had people write me that say, uh, now I can't use, it just won't work for me anymore. It depends on your platform, operating on your system, operating yeah. system, on your graphics card. It depends on a lot of different things. But it's breaking on somebody. It's just breaking. So, somebody, but I, I think that Google did it just to be like, you know what? This is a bad public relation thing for us. This is doing us no good. If somebody wants to buy this, then, then we're not the bad guys anymore. Yeah. And, and they never bought it for the Nick collection anyway. They bought it for Snapseed, which is, by the way, an awesome program, mm-hmm. an awesome app. Of course, the first thing they did was to, they take away the desktop version. <laughs> I know. But they, right? But anyway, it's an awesome app. That's, they wanted that technology. I and get it. And the viewpoint technology and everything yeah. in there. But, but it's all inside that the app. It's not like they bought right. it for anything else. They never really added the, the viewpoint technology to, to update to some of the older else, yeah. plugins or anything. Yeah. So, so can I give some thoughts on Please, where, where I, think, I, think that's the, I think that's the next question is everybody saying, where is this going to go? So, yeah, but ba- no. Bill Truen has a comment. Am I bad because I don't use plugins? Not at all, Bill. No, no. You're, I, you're not good, though. <laughs> oh, no, just kidding. No. I say the simpler the better. So if you get what you want without using them, I would not bother so um but i think everybody's asking you know so so what's next um if you go to the web page where this is on there's two sections there's one that says um we've acquired we will be developing something new in 2018 put in your email address to stay updated yep so for anybody that can't read between the lines because i actually (laughs) i actually you probably gotten them and i've probably gotten them as well um 
people like I posted about this and then people writing in and wonder I wonder if they'll be free in 2018 if you can't read between the lines Come they will on. not be free in 2018 um, DxO I don't think bought them to keep to just keep giving free stuff away. No, didn't DxO say basically go download it now while it's free? Yeah. And then there's that section on the right side that says they're yeah. still free. Put your email address in to download. Yeah, they're still free for now. So I I don't I think, but you know what? I I don't mind paying for no, it. You should pay for if, it. If if they do what's necessary yeah. and update it, make it work again. There'll be plenty of people that will pay for it. Uh, I've been moving further and further away from the Nick collection in the last. You know, because I knew it was coming. I knew death was Im imminent, right? And there's some other some companies that are coming out that are well, doing some amazing stuff. One of one of the problems has been the the Nick stuff was was made when most of our screens were this size, right? Um, and most of our raw files were a quarter of the size that they are today. Yep. So when you get when I use it on here, it actually works pretty good. When I put it on a 4K or 5K screen, and it's a Sony A7R2. 80 megabyte raw file that's when i start to see some performance hits on it because now the screen is monstrous and they're you know they're, they're not necessarily tuned for that but so anyway i think we're all in agreement it's not going to be free uh, no so i so somebody had asked me about it and I, my thoughts on it were were two things one actually i had to write this down um number one i don't know what it is but dxo doesn't blip a lot amongst the people I talk to. Um, the DxO software. I see DxO mark scores all the time. Like, you know, right. they, rate, they rate lenses and all that stuff. The DxO software doesn't blip much. And I don't know if it's, I'm just talking to the wrong people, if it's the wrong people I, asking yeah. me. I don't know many people that use it. I think it's bigger in Europe than it, it is here. It could be. I think they're, I think they're based in Europe yeah, as well. But so. I, I rarely run into someone. But can I tell you something? Like Some aspects of their software are really yeah. good. Like oh, their yeah. noise reduction. Now, I don't like noise reduction. But I would say that they probably have the best noise reduction out there. And lens correction. And lens correction, yeah. yes. They're noise reduction and, and lens correction. Architectural photographers are some of the ones that, yep. I, whenever somebody asks me about DxO, they're usually a pretty high-end photographer, and they're usually somewhere maybe architecture. But you know what? This is the thing that's going to put them on the map. Yeah. Them getting Nick is going to put them on the map. So, Everyone will know DxO now. So so that's number one. Is I, I haven't. So now you have them go into a company that, again, I haven't heard a lot from, so that could really, it could move them over. The other thing, and this is the one that, this is one I keep going back to. Nick wasn't just about the plugins. It was, it was the people behind Nick. Oh, yeah. So you had, you had Ed, who was, I don't know, the founders, the owners, or whatever, very, very involved in the photography industry. You had Kevin, you had Josh Haftel, you had Lori Rubin, you had Tony Corbell. Tony, Lori, beloved photographers in the industry. You're, you're forgetting um, somebody. Josh, Tony. Nils. Nils. Nils, Nils is the guy. Yes. Nils, yeah. Like exactly. Nils, yeah. there wouldn't be any of this it, without yeah. Nils. I know, how could I forget Nils? We had Nils uh, on the grid. That's right, we did. Yeah, Nils <laughs> is the man. I mean, it's like, you know, I, I don't know if you know the whole history of this, but I, I knew Nils back when he was a moderator at America Online. Like, wow. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm confusing him with somebody else. I'm confusing him with, with Kai Kraus. Sorry. Okay, Kai but, Power Tools. But right, but Nils made a, a set of actions called Nils Actions. Yes. Remember those? Yeah. Those are the ones he made. And I yeah. met him probably 15 years ago in Orlando at back there used to be PMA show. Like I met him there and really nice guy uh, from Germany, super smart, came up with all this stuff, just smart, smart, smarty, smart. And he was the kind of guy, it was originally wasn't called uh, uh, Nick Software. It was called Nils. Yeah. And then somebody else had already trademarked that name and they had to change it to Nick. Yeah. So it was really close to Nils. But yeah, it was, this, was, this was his baby. So don't forget about so, Nils. So, so I felt like part of Nick was always the people behind Nick. And not just, yep. not just because, oh, we, we love the people behind Nick. It was because of what those people drove the company to. Um, again, you know, Tony Corbell, Lori Rubin, beloved photographers oh, yeah. in the industry, great photographers. And you had these people shooting, using the products, bringing back information about what they needed and wanted. Josh, I mean, Josh, so Josh works at Adobe now. Um, 
Josh was, you know, he was one of the, the, the huge people behind Silver Effects. Like, they, they went and they, t they took all of these films, they shot all of these films, yep. scanned all this stuff, figured all this stuff out to do this. And Josh was one of the guys. Josh is, you know, he's a very technical guy, but he's a very creative guy. Yeah, he is. And he was able, very interesting he was able to bridge the gap. He's been I on think, the grid, too, by the way. Yeah. I think, and I, I don't know that Josh was an engineer that wrote the code, but I think he was one of the people that was really good at bridging the gap. Yeah, like he's, he's the Lightroom mobile product manager. I think he's more of a product management guy with vision yeah. than he's actually writing code, but he probably could write code. Yeah, he's, he's a smart guy. So, so it just it, the thing that gets me is it was the popularity of Nick, the people behind Nick. And so I've always kind of thought software has a personality. Yeah. And in general, that personality comes from the family that you're around. And I, I worked for a software company for a period of time, so I, I could see it and I saw it in other companies. And so now you're almost like taking this child and you're putting it with a different family. And you're putting it with different people. Does that software succeed and do the same thing because there's all those different people around it? Well, I mean, luckily, a lot of people went when they when they, when Google bought Nick, a lot of the Nick employees went straight over to Google. Like all of a sudden they walk in and, hey, everybody work for Google now, which, you know, for a lot of people, they're probably, yeah. you know, popping champagne corks. But when you get in a, in a big organization like that and you're used to being lean and mean and you all get in a room and make a decision and then you go to Google and like Google's like, well, everybody just kind of chill. We'll have a meeting in six months. I think that 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 kind of thing can happen at, at a company, like you said, a multi-billion dollar company. Yeah. Um, but so so what is it about Nick? Like people love it. Now, now I, I want to I I figure it out. I want to give you a quote. Piotr said, and he, he makes a good point here. Piotr said, uh, Google didn't do nothing. They got so many people hooked up on Nick when they made it free because they did. They Google announced one day, hey, Everybody come and get it for free. Now, that was a good day and a bad day. Yeah. Because <laughs> everybody that paid for it either knew that was the end. Like, you don't just give away software unless you go, yeah. we're done. Because if there was going to be a, an upgrade coming, you don't give away the current version. You know what I mean? It's like you give away – software companies will give away an old version. They'll go, oh, last year's – you know, a lot, of, a lot of software companies have done that. They'll give you an old version of the software hoping in hopes that you'll buy the new one. They don't give away the current version of the software. No, that, I, think to, I think to everybody, I think as a user, you're like, woo -hoo, it's free. But I think people that really liked Nick and cared about it saw that as the nail in the coffin. Yeah. Like that, this, the, yep. the, the doomsday is coming because it's, it's done. Yeah. Hey, uh, North of the 49th says, uh, I recently upgraded to the newest Photoshop. So that would be Photoshop 2018. And I lost both the Nick and the Tug. The Topaz plugins. Should I forget about reinstalling and go go all in with Aurora HDR 2018? Recently bought. Okay, so Aurora HDR 2018 is a completely different program. Then, yeah, the Nick and Topaz. Yeah. So first off, go download them again and do the reinstall. How really? How long does it take? It won't take you any time at all. Go to DXO, download a fresh copy, and do a reinstall from scratch. So that's number one. Same thing with the Topaz. If you paid for them. Go download them again from you. Have your serial numbers. Go and download them again. They'll probably work because 2018 didn't break everybody's. But some, you know, I don't know. When you upgraded to 2018, how many of your plugins made it over to the new one? Like it took half mine. Yeah. <laughs> like half of mine went, and I had to do a video on how to move the other half yeah. over because I'm like, like my next yeah, stuff Lightroom, didn't, didn't Lightroom come over. took everything, but Photoshop. No, Photoshop, Photoshop did not. All right. And Larry Becker. Larry oh. Becker. Oh, Larry. Personally, I'm all about Glade plugins. They don't stink. <laughs> oh, Larry. oh, Larry. All right, let's see. I Larry. see the bottom of Dale's comment there. What's what's Dale commenting on there at the top? Uh, good for DxO. Hope they update it to 16-bit, new iOS. Um, Dale says at the bottom, yeah. too, do either of you think DxO will give a discount for users that purchased Nick before it went free? No. 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 You will, you will, no. You will kindly, sometime in 2018, you will... They will come out with a version that they'll charge you for. Yeah. Um, and let, let's face it. You can't say that purchase Nick before it went free because that was so many years ago. And I don't even think I would guess that that customer information was probably not passed along in the, in the deal. No. Um, 
which is why if you look on DXO's website, they're kind of like, hey, if you're interested, put in your email address. Yeah, because they're I'm not like, guess. we already have your email yeah. address. All right. Uh, hey, Matt, the Wombat Charnitsky says, speaking of larger company organizations, congrats to Scott for yes. being named on Tenfold's list of the top 120 most influential CEOs. I, I came in at like number 30. <laughs> no one was more surprised than me. It's, it's really based on your social media, right? And it's like they do your estimated reach and true reach. So here's what I want to say is... I am 10 spots ahead of Jeff Bezos from Amazon. Now, Jeff Bezos was re recently named the richest man in the world, <laughs> right? He, he beat Bill Gates. Now, Bill Gates was number one on the list. I was number 30. So I'm like 10 spots above Bezos. Jeff so Bezos. you're the richest man in the world, too? No. As well? No, I'm not the richest <laughs> man in the world. I would be willing to switch with you, Jeff. I'll give you my spot at number 30. <laughs> if I can move up the richest, like, I'll swap yeah. with him. Because one. I Dude, think, congrats. Thank you. Do not, I saw that list and I'm like, what? Because you know what it is? A lot of CEOs, I don't think, have a really big social media thing, right? Because if you're a CEO of a company, you usually have to have like the legal department go through every tweet and everything. I got to imagine for a lot of CEOs. Now, if you're Richard Branson, he was like, can you believe Branson beat me? Elon <laughs> Musk. Elon Musk beat me by 28. Can I tell you something? If I hadn't given Elon Musk the patent, an idea to make an electric car, he never would have beat me by 28. But anyway. He it, owes you. Right. He owes, <laughs> Elon Musk owes me, and Bezos, I'd be willing to switch and be on a different list <laughs> anytime. Let's see. Uh, Jeff, Scott Jeffcoat says, maybe Kelby One could offer it along with their subscription like they did a few years ago before it was free from Google. Yeah, we had a thing where they gave us, what did they give us, Matt? It wasn't the Nick collection. But years ago, they gave us something like if you yeah but it was that's that it would be a great benefit yeah, the yes. reason why i i would hesitate to think that that would happen would be if you go to dxo's website and you see how much they charge for their products it's 99 or 149 dollars so you should get ready that when yep. these come out you're going to fork over 100 to 150 dollars if you want them yeah it, like, now, you were saying earlier Matt and i were talking before the show that's kind of the baseline. Like yeah. right now, the price of a plug-in, now these have come way down, but but the price of a plug-in is about 100 bucks. On one, on one has a picture that they forwarded um, around probably a year or so ago, and it's a pretty funny picture. It was somebody at a trade show, at the booth at a trade show from six or seven years ago, mm -hmm. and it said it had a slash through Six hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Show special four ninety-nine. And people were that was right on par with it. all of them. I mean, they all man, charge everybody that. like they all. That's what Nick they used cost. To be what three ninety-nine? That was probably in its cheap days. It was probably more than that at some yeah. point. But yeah. So so I, one of the things I said to to you in the beginning, and I I, I wanted to say it here was, so we could talk about all this stuff. I think part of it is also helping, helping frame it for people to kind of get on board and understand what to expect. And by the way, nobody from any company has said this, but I kind of just from looking, if you're going to be a photographer, whether it's a professional, whether it's a, an enthusiast or you really like photography, you make a little bit of money on the side, what, any, any genre, I have a DSLR, I want professional editing. You should be prepared that it's going to be about $100-ish a year. It's about what it's going to be. You might find a sale for 79 or 89 on Cyber, Cyber Weekend. Deal, yeah. yeah. And then you might spend 119 and get some free presets and some training, whatever it happens to be. It's going to be in that 100 ish dollars a year. They're all going to be there. In fact, they all already are there. Um, except Capture One. Capture One's like $300. But um, yeah, it's still quite expensive. Capture One's all very, very expensive. Well, I always kind of laugh when somebody says, I'm ditching Lightroom for Capture One because yeah, I hate like, the subscription. Oh, come on. And I'm like, Really? You're going to spend 300 bucks for so, software? Can I say something about that real quick about yeah. Capture One? Capture One, there's, there are things, now, there are things people don't understand about Capture One. Number one is, Capture One is, I think, the hardest oh, yeah. program ever. I get lost in it. Yeah, everybody <laughs> does. It's, it, it is like if you think Photoshop or Lightroom is hard, that's number one. It's very, very hard. Now, it's a, it is a high-end program. It, it is the standard for real fashion photography. <clears throat> I don't mean cheesecakey photos. Yeah. I mean like if you go to New York City and they're shooting fashion, it is almost a lock that they are using Capture One. 
almost a lock. Doesn't matter. They don't have to be because I think also people think you have to use capture when you're using a medium format camera. Right? Everybody thinks Yeah, yeah. Well, if you have a medium format camera, like if you've got a um, well, they sell it. The, the company yeah, Phase One is Phase One. Capture yeah, if one. you have a Phase One back, a digital back, or something, you you've got to use Capture One. It came with your camera. Yeah, but but you have to tether. It's like you yeah. must tether. Yeah. So and that's that's a very specific. If you're using a, a medium format, you're shooting in a studio. You're going to be tethering and you're going to be using Capture One. But Capture One is expensive. It's it is basically three hundred dollars instead of ten dollars a month. Well, Lightroom alone. Five bucks a month. Yeah. Right? Because it really, that's what you're paying. Yeah. Five, five bucks for Photoshop for and five bucks for Photoshop. It's 10 bucks total. All right. Number two, as hard as anything. Hard, 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 hard. Number three uh, is it's, it is for a particular genre of, it's not really for landscape photographers. It's not for other ones, you know. And four, it doesn't have a community built around it to teach you it. Mm -hmm. There's the, it, it is you're kind of a lone doggy when yeah. you get it. Now we we have a class coming out on Kelby One on the latest version of Capture One, so we're we're going to help people that are and and we have people being asking us for hey look 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 Dale says uh, I donated for the clean water for Puerto Rico too. It's now up to. 47,960. Who's going to put it over 48? <laughs> Dale, thank you very much. You were awesome for doing that. So sorry to interrupt, but I had to do that because, whoom. Um, Dale says, can, <coughs> oh, here he goes. Someone, can someone please add the Northrop URL for donations? If you're looking for the donations, go to, go to my Twitter account, scottkelby.com. There's a direct link to it right there. So, but anyway, there's a lot to Capture One. And it is a good product. I'm not kicking the product. It's, it can do neat, neat stuff. Yeah. Hey, though, can I ask you something about plugins, Matt, in general? Because I think there's a lot of people that don't understand. Because plugins are about to change. Up to this point, plugins have all pretty much done the same thing. Effects. Mm -hmm. They're all <coughs> effects plugins. Nick Color Effects Pro, Nick Silver Effects Pro, Mix Analog Pro. Yeah. They're either HDR, which is an effect. Yeah. Right. Or they're just special effects plugins. Uh, and, and all of them, right? Until there's this new thing happening in the plug-in market where I think there are a lot of people see a weakness in Lightroom. And they think we're going to add our own Lightroom. They're going to become full-fledged Lightroom competitors. And I think if you, if you want to find out what the weakness is, and Matt and I have discussed this before, is the democratization of the editing part of photography. And... For example, if you go to Apple's own software, which, by the way, I was going to read you this whole thing from Jeremy Cowart, because Jeremy Cowart is raving online, on Twitter, <coughs> raving so much that he had to say I was not sponsored or paid by Apple to say this. Mm -hmm. He's raving about what Apple has done to the Photos app, right? The actual Photos app that's on iOS 11. No, I'm sorry. What is it on your phone now? Uh, no, it's uh, High Sierra. Excuse me. The desktop yeah. version. Hi, Sierra. He's got tweet after tweet after tweet about how much he loves it. And he's just going on and on. And he even had to say, guys, I'm not being paid by Apple. <laughs> All right. But Apple's program, any program you get, any free thing you get for free or 99 cents on your phone will have, tell me if I'm wrong, shadows, highlights, clarity, whites, blacks, curves. Will any of them not have that stuff now? Nope. So there was a time where clarity was only in Lightroom. There was a time where the healing brush was only in Photoshop. These things are everywhere. You cannot find a free piece of editing stuff for your phone that doesn't have every single thing that I mentioned. They all have it. Even if they change the name from clarity to clarity structure. To structure. Oops, you took the word out of my mouth. Clarity to structure is the same thing. So. Let's just take that part aside. What's happening in the market is all of these competitors, I do think they sense a weakness in Lightroom, and they think we want to, uh, we want to be able to, they think they can do the management of the photos better, right? I think that Apple would tell you that, and this is what Jeremy's saying, the ecosystem yeah, between you're, the Photos app and your phone, like you're you, take already a, in. you take a picture here and it's, I'm already paying for it. It's already there. It's already in. Take a picture here. It's everywhere. So then you've got on one. On one is photo management. 
They've got a raw processor. But, but now you don't even have to have a raw processor. Everybody's processing raw photos. Yeah. There was a yes. time where you needed like, oh, you've got a raw. Like camera raw was like a thing. But now everybody. Give me. Yeah. DxO now it's, has it. Alien Skin has it. Topaz now has it. Everybody's got it. On one, Mac fun. You name it. They got it. Everybody's got it. So <clears throat> we'll put that aside. But they're all going after the new thing. And we just saw Mac fun. Now they changed their name. Skyloom. Skyloom. It's they're called now. Because they're, they're not a Mac centric company yeah. they've got stuff on windows now but they just teased now i haven't seen the whole thing but they teased their image management thing on where on one already has it the word on the street is affinity photo is working on a big thing now i don't know if you know affinity so affinity basically created a standalone photoshop competitor it looks it looks so much this is my own opinion i'm going to give you an opinion <laughs> to me it looks, in my opinion, so close to Photoshop that if I worked for Adobe, I would have I would have attorneys swarming Affinity Photo. Because what is it? Forty nine bucks, and it's probably ninety percent of what Photoshop will do for yeah. forty. And you own it, so it's not Photoshop, but it's like the very next best thing. And if you don't need all the stuff that Photoshop will do, you don't need CMYK color conversions <laughs> and stuff like that and all. They are, the rumor is, they are working on a Lightroom, a full-out Lightroom competitor. So. Which you, I think we would expect. Yeah, I think they we did would. so well with yeah. the Photoshop one. Yeah. You know, what was interesting. When I went to that, uh, I spoke at the photography show in the UK. And I didn't know how much money is behind Affinity. They had one of the biggest booths at the show. Dude, they had one of those giant mega booths. And I was like. Wow. Uh-oh. Yeah. Anyway. But. There's so many people getting into this game. There's so many people that are now literally looking at that, that, that space and saying, hey, look, we can do it as good Adobe. We can do it as better. Adobe. And they're offering all the same stuff that it's going to get to a point. What's keeping Adobe really in the game right now in so many ways is that it's so cheap. Yeah. It's 10 bucks a month. for You still need Photoshop. Nothing really touches Photoshop, but... Affinity is as close as you're going to get. Affinity is Affinity's really mm -hmm. close. I, like, I, I could use Affinity. Like, yeah. If someone took Photoshop away from me tomorrow, yeah, that's I, what I, would I, use. Could figure, I, could, I could use Affinity. I wouldn't be too, uh, too upset. But so I, I'll, give you an, and I'll give you an insider's perspective because I was, I was at On One during this, this transit <laughs> over there giggling. I was at On One is it during. Is Nott's comment that you're giggling over? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I was at on one kind of during this transition. And so what what started happening, and I think it happened across the board. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. Go ahead and we're gonna get to this next. <laughs> this is so oh, good. I can't, I this can't. is so No, I have good. to say it because now everybody's like, what are you guys laughing all right, at? All so, right, let's start with Ickle Dot. Ickle Dot says Skyloom. Skyloom is the worst name ever. Sky dumb, you might say, in my humble opinion, of course, which Whenever anybody says, in my humble opinion, it's kind of like, bless your heart. Um, Piotr came, Piotr back, came back with, with quote of the week. You doing it or am I? You can do it. No, it's not. Worse would be Mac Fun Classic. Double <laughs> 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 okay. cat sound. So, back to the story. Um, and, and I'll speak on behalf of being out on one during that time. But I think this change was going on in every company, every every, and we call them plug-in companies, but they're actually not. Not so, anymore. Yeah, because they're all. Once Lightroom came out, Lightroom, Light Photoshop would let you plug into Photoshop. Remember, you could open up a panel in Photoshop. Yep. Lightroom didn't let you. Lightroom, you could not take over the Lightroom interface. So mm -hmm. all the plug-in companies inadvertently had to make a standalone. Yeah, Luminar has a stand, complete standalone. Yeah, they had to do it to work with Lightroom if they wanted to stay alive, which opened up a standalone plugin. So then, so kind of fast forward, and around this time, probably three years ago, you had a lot of people very, very happy with the 9.99 a month, but you also had a lot of people disenchanted with it. So now, all of those people own, they owned On One, they owned a Mac Fun product. They owned an Alien Skin product. They owned a Topaz product. Yes. And they would go, and I can speak from being at On One. Your customers come to you, and they say, "Well, I already own you for my effects, and I can see you kind of do exposure and shadows and highlights. 
can you put a, a, a photo browser on the front of this thing and a raw editor <laughs> in it? And then I'm done. And, and then I'm done. Now I can leave, I can leave the Adobe, the Dude, Adobe ecosystem. Perfectly clear has stuff like that now. Yes. You looked at perfectly they, clear, but like that's how perfect, it happened. The first the whole set. That's how it happened. I, I really think it was customer driven. They all had their customers, yeah. and all of their customers that became disenchanted with the Adobe side started moving over to them and asking them, can you develop this? So they all okay. set out on the path to So develop. where's this going? So where does this where does this lead us? So, so we know, we know we're going to pay a hundred bucks a year, whether you pay a hundred dollars a year, yeah. or whether you pay monthly, else, or you're you going to pay a hundred bucks chunk. a year, pretty much. Everybody better um, get used to that. You were yeah. saying, forget the perpetual game. So so yeah. get your mind get your mind off of well the because the the common argument is well you know I bought I bought on one and now I own it forever and ever ever I don't have to buy anything else. No, you don't. You do. You you're just you're fooling yourself. Yeah, you're you're going to have to update. It's. Operating yeah. systems, code changes, camera changes, you will have to update. So get, get yourself in that mindset. And then I think right now, right now it's kind of a matter of catch up. They all have to catch up. So which one are you going to pick? Which, and, and I think the beauty of you it is... You have to pick one? Well, and you could try them all. That's the beauty of it. They all have like 30, 60 day trials. They're all, every trial is fully functional. So I think, you know, try everything, but yeah, and they all kind of do something. Everybody does a little something different too, which is where it gets confusing. All right. Give me your top three plugins. Um, you can only have three plugins. What were they going to be? On one effects. I do have to say, <sighs> this is tough. On one effects, um, that new little sun thing. Oh, from Lum Luminar? Luminar <laughs> does it pretty. I, 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 don't, I mean, I, I, I don't think I would buy it and install it just to use that. Like, I'd have to yeah, move dude, over you know to a Luminar's, workflow. You know what their secret weapon is, honestly? They got two secret weapons. Their secret weapon is presets. It comes with so many presets. Like, so, yeah. so, so many. Because you know what it is? There's, there's a, a sec segment of the population that wants to tweak everything. Yeah. Right? But I, can I tell you, I go to a preset for one... I mean, I go to a plug-in for one reason. I can probably do it in Photoshop. Yeah. I just want it I don't done want to. quick and now. Yeah. And show me some, show me some, like, do I want A, B, C, or D? Ooh, D looks good. Click. Yeah. So... That's what, what I think Luminar's secret weapon is. They have a lot of presets. It ships with a lot of presets. Then you can go download a whole bunch more presets. And if you want to buy some presets, they're like, you know, six bucks. I mean, they're, they're cheap. I think you'd be surprised if you went into the others, though. I, like, I, see, I, got them all. I've tried Luminar. Yeah. And I would, go to, I would go to On One Effects, and I actually think they have more. Because that's why I go to effects. Is I'm like, holy crap! I just I pull up this grid and I'm like, I like that one. Yeah, but, but they don't have that crazy new sunlight filter. They got it. But so I would say <laughs> I'm gonna go with on one effects. I'm gonna go with when I do HDR and I don't do a lot of HDR anymore. But when I do HDR, I still can't get past Photomatix. Like Photomatix is still oh come on, it's you still the cut. de facto standard for me for HDR. Dude, it looks so dated. It's I, so... I I like I Dude, like go look at Photomatix. go look at go look at. Aurora HDR. I'm not going to look at Aurora because it's freaking $99. It is, Aurora costs more than Luminar. Okay, then. How then, do you do that? Dude, you got to pay Trey. They got to pay Trey. <laughs> they got to back the truck up to Trey's house. Like, <laughs> all the money pours out. Gosh, we're, we've run out of time here. Hey, I'm at, we, we have giveaways. We've got to read the comments. Dude, we, we're going to read the comments, but we have, we have giveaways. We are giving away the most awesome thing today. We're giving away the Platypod Ultra. Anyone that watched my... So, Matt, you know, when I went to Lisbon, this was my tripod. The whole trip, I took a tripod with me. I never used it one single time. This was my entire rig. Watch this. So this is what I love about this. This little plate fits in your pocket. <laughs> All I had to carry around was this. But then I actually attached these two. There's a hole on the bottom of this plate for a black rapid strap. Like you screw oh, right you into threw, this. Yeah. So I would put my camera here, make sure it's locked on. And I would carry it on my side. So if I needed to like put it up on something, I put it on a table. I did this one shot, Matt, that I showed today. And like, can I show you? I'm gonna do it real quick. I'm gonna show you. Yeah, I am. I'm gonna and I'm gonna have to read. Here, while you're pulling it up, I'll I'll I and do it. it. I'm like I'm like. Um, I went to uh, I went to Vermont a couple of weeks ago to do some fall photography yes. uh, with my wife, and 
I took the little rubber because it comes with like little rubbery things yeah, that does. go down here and, and steel so, spikes. So Vermont, like the the area we went to, Vermont, it's so picturesque. It's not like you go do a shoot. It's pronounced picturesque. Sorry, picturesque. Um, and you go. It's not like you go do a shoot. You just drive because at every corner. There was a beautiful, picturesque queue. Vermont's beautiful. Fall, when fall, it's fall. Yeah. Uh, um, so at every corner, so so it's not like I was going to go and get out of the car, get my tripod, kudunk, 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 put the camera on. So I took this, I put the little rubbery things on. Did you put the strap on it? I didn't put the strap oh. on. I just had it on top, and I'd get out of the car, and I'd set it down on the, the roof of the car, click, click, click. Click, 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 put it back in. Oh, my god! Move on to the next spot. But rather than get the tripod out, I just used the car right, as what, the what tripod. Lens, what, what body and lens were you using? Uh, A7R2. Okay, heaviest body there is. And? <laughs> um, either a, a 70 to 200 or 24 so you, to 70. With the Ultra? Yeah. With the small one. So yeah. people were asking me that today on the webcast. They are going, can you use it with the 7200? Well, I used it with the 7200 all over the place. Because the, I don't know if they can see, but... The weight's here. Yeah. You, and you don't, the 7200 has got the... Yeah, yeah. The yeah. 70 to 200 has a foot. Yeah. You don't mount your, your camera here with the 70 to 200 out here. You mount it to the foot on the yeah, lens. Yeah, it works great. Which sets all the weight like that. So yep. you're so not going to collapse. We're giving away the, the platypod, and we're giving away the accessory kit. Oh, my God, wherever it went. And we're giving away the Max. So the, this is the platypod Max, which is the big one. So this is if you have a giant, like, DSLR... Is it open? We had to bust one open today. It is, and it comes in a red travel bag, so no one steals it. I gotta read this comment though. Read that comment. Ickle dot, seriously? What do you say? It's good that Adobe now has competition. Might bring the price of the whole suite down. So that's the fifty dollars a month? Seriously? Fifty dollars a month is a lot of money. It's six hundred bucks a year. But for well, for the people that use the whole suite, yeah. you're getting you're, you're getting 27 programs with it. Like, if no, you no. use Premiere and all that, uh, I, so I don't is? know if he's here's talking the, about Lightroom and Photoshop the, or everything. No, I don't think he means that. Here's the problem, Matt. You and I come from a day where it, it was the, upgrade, the upgrade was $1,200 every 18 months to upgrade the creative suite was yeah. twelve hundred dollars? But dude, that 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 goes against what Ickle Dot's saying because we're talking about photo editing software. Yeah. So it's like. But dude, I like Ickle Dot, so I'm going to defend it. You know him. what? Uh, yeah. Hey, Dale not says we're at forty-eight thousand. Like, seriously, guys. Hey, Dale says we're at forty-eight thousand for Puerto Rico. Let's push it up. Oh, Dale, close. I'm super digging you. Not only for giving, but for also pushing it. For pushing. There you go. All right. All right, more. This is how big the Platypod Ultra is. We're giving away this, too. So we're giving away all this stuff today. How do you enter the contest? Go to kelby1.com slash contest. And all you have to do is enter Matt's middle name to win. <laughs> so there it is, the grid. And then down in the comments, tell us, do you want to win the Ultra, the small one, or the Max, the big one? It's a big one. So that's the, the, there's the two things. Um, so we got a couple more comments and we got we to wrap up. So Debbie says, what other plugins? You said on one, you said Photomatics. Photomatics. And? You don't use any more. All right. I'm going to give you that's my all three. I use. All right. I, now, let me ask you a question. When was the last time you tried Luminar? Because uh, something changed that's pretty, pretty, pretty significant. Yesterday. Yesterday? Did you, have you, did you have the latest version? Yeah. Okay. So, because my, my problem with Luminar, and believe me, I told the folks at Luminar because I'm friends with them. I said, this launch is too slow. Yeah. It was 20 seconds to launch on my machine versus 10 seconds for the Nick collection. But the new one launches, launches faster than Nick, seven seconds. It went from 20 seconds, which was like, oh, God, kill me, to seven seconds. Which seven seconds is, is way faster. None of them launch as fast as I want to. Yeah. But so I, I, I do like Luminar, especially with the new stuff that they're adding. I haven't seen, they really, I've not seen, I didn't go to, I didn't go to Photo Plus. I didn't get any like behind the scenes. Yeah. Here's what the new, you know. Dude, they, they will. So the, the climate as I see going forward, you'll have, you'll have Adobe. Mm -hmm. You'll have your Photoshop and Lightroom. Mm -hmm. um, I think On1 is going to and has taken a massive chunk of it. And Luminar has taken a massive chunk of it. And once they add... Dude, I don't think there's a, ma I don't think there's a massive chunk of the market of Photoshop and Lightroom yeah. that's moving off of that. There's a, there's a, I mean, there's millions and yeah. millions of users on that plan. 
But, but whatever's left over, sorry. they're taking a chunk of. The, 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 the thing that happened is, is people that hung on to Lightroom 6, if you didn't subscribe before two weeks ago, you, you're gone. You were not convinced two weeks ago with the name change to Classic that... <laughs> <laughs> that okay, I think I want to finally go this way. Like, if, if you were if you were on the fence as of two weeks ago, and you were like, oh, I've been Jen's hanging on, the on that. Six. Jen's like, yeah. Like, let me see what happens. I'm thinking about it. If you were on that fence, you're you're now looking for something else. You know what I get people asking me, Matt? They go and and like in the last week, I want the ten dollar plan with Lightroom Classic. Where do I find it? Have you yeah, tried? It's kind of hidden. It? It's it's got, we talked about that. Kind of buried. But, but it, but it is there. So real quick, I think you're going to have Mac Fun, you're going to have On One, and now you're going to have DxO. Um, you didn't I name a third plug, and I, I only got one out. I only got Luminar Oh, out. sorry, sorry. Okay, yeah, Luminar. Number two, perfectly clear, complete. Oh, for the have retouching you, stuff? Have you, dude, it is really, and you know, like Christina it's, Shirk. If I did por if I did more portraits, that would be on my Dude, list. Dude, I'm telling you, it's pretty dang good. It, now, it is. if I want to do a, a really high end thing and I want to take my time and do it right, I, I do that all in Photoshop from scratch. Yeah. But if I need to get something done quick, it does a surprisingly yeah. good job. So honestly, I still go to Nick for a few things, but my Nick performance. Is, is really, it's slowly dying. Well, maybe I should go get the D DxO version, it won't. I still go to Nick for, there's a few things that are in the Nick collection that just have a certain look. Their glow. There's there something, something about something their glow. There's something about that. their glow. You're right, their glow, I, they have a couple of things, and you know what else too? Their, it's their brightness and, no, not brightness. Brilliance and warmth. Brilliance and warmth. Yeah. There's something about their brilliance and warmth. And there's a couple of others. I like their cross-processing and stuff, but for most of the part, I've moved over to Luminar because Luminar is, is – and I was, I was afraid, and like, it, I, I could see Nick dying on me, and I'm like, I have no backup plan. Yeah. And so moving to Luminar was a natural for me. And now that it launches in seven seconds, I, it launches faster than Nick. I find myself launching Nick less and less. One of the reasons why I launched Nick was because it was faster. Like, I just like, oh, God, I don't want to wait 20 seconds. But now that Luminar is faster, I'm like, okay. So that's a big one. Um, and the third one is Aurora HDR. <laughs> Dude, I'm, but have you tried the new one? I know it's $99. I know it's $99. Can I tell you something? Matt's got a lot of money. <laughs> Matt's got, don't let Matt fool you. Matt is got money. I'm stealing this coffee cup. Baloney. Matt is printing his own money. Matt's got a lot of money. $99 to Matt. He spills more money out of his wallet in the morning when he's getting dressed on the floor of his bedroom than it costs to get that plug in. But dude, Aurora 2018 is so much better than, and, and every time you buy it, Trey gets, uh, <laughs> Trey gets a new set of wings. So he gets a new, I think he gets a new Ferrari or something every oh, time you man. buy it. I, I, I'm just amazed that the HDR plugin costs more than the main photo raw editor. Dude, I think they should route roll it into Luminar. It's they're gonna have to because competition will make it so they have to because Lightroom has HDR built in, on one now has HDR built in. Everybody's gonna move to HDR built in. But then they in. have to change the name to Lumatray. <laughs> Lumatray. But they'll they'll do great. They're I mean Dima, Alex, Kevin, like these are these are people right. that like we see around and good people in the industry. Uh, ben so. says, for people who don't run a business but enjoy having the suite because it's a hobby, it can seem like a lot. Depending on how much how much you uh, on how much you seem to, how much you seem is too much for a hobby. For a pro who charges for the work, such as big studios, yeah. it's pennies. Hey, can, can I tell you something though? Because I think one thing that people just in general have kind of lost the idea of is. Photoshop and Lightroom were created. They were never created as consumer products. These are professional, high-end editing products. You know what's a, a consumer product? Photoshop Elements. Photoshop Elements, which was by the made. way, how much is it? 79, 89 79 bucks? bucks? 79 bucks. Photoshop Elements was made for consumers. That's a hobbyist product. But what a lot of people are saying is, no, no, no. I want to use what the high-end pros are using, but I only want it for $10 a month, and then I want to complain that it's 10 bucks a month. 
Because a lot of people do complain about the 10 bucks a month. I'm like, really? It's 10 bucks a month. I tell people at my seminar, like when they come back in from lunch and I go, all right. So I talked to some people that were like, oh, it's 10 bucks a month. I don't know. I'm not going to rent my software. I go, who paid less than $10 for lunch here at the convention center? Everybody laughs because there's, you know, lunch was $17. But when it comes to being able to use high-end software, developer professionals are like, oh, I ain't paying five bucks. Five bucks for Photoshop, five bucks for Lightroom. Oh, come on, I'm out. And Adobe's you, ripping us off. It's and, a rip -off. and you want to know the funny thing? Again, I can give you kind of an insider's perspective on this. Was all of these plugins, all these other, they cost one nine even before. Like we can go back five or six years and, right. and know they were five and six hundred dollars. But before Adobe went to nine ninety nine a month, they all cost. 200 bucks? 200, 300 dollars. Yeah. When Adobe went to 999 a month, you you need to thank whether you're going to stick with Adobe or not, or not. Thank Adobe. Do whatever you want, but you need to thank them because they brought the average price down. And I watched it happen. I watched the average price go from 199 hey. to 149 hey. to 99. Hey, Jen says a lot of people are logging on now because they forgot about the time change. <laughs> Okay, we didn't change our time, but London did. Swing in London, baby. All right. We're this weekend, I Hey, think. guess what? We're like 20 minutes over, which is very bad. <laughs> well, we got another 40 if we go by the, uh, the time. All right. <laughs> okay, well, gosh. Uh, Chris Moore says, Kelby One has helped me tremendously. So educational and fun. Thank you very much. Larry Becker says, and I quote, I will just never trust Apple software because they always break functions and backward compatibility with like Aperture, Final Cut, iMovie, GarageBand, the original, original Mac Pictures app, etc. So, Larry, may I say this? I freaking agree with you. Let me tell you what. What Apple did to iMovie, iMovie was the greatest video editing thing for free on your Mac. It was so, so good. And then Apple came and destroyed it. Final Cut Pro, our entire business was run on Final Cut Pro. And then Apple destroyed it when they announced Final Cut X. And our entire company moved to Adobe Premiere in about a month. Uh, they uh, Aperture, of course, they just discontinued. Aperture had a lot of fans and had a lot of great things to yeah. it. They had some things that are better than Lightroom, like their slideshow stuff. Kills. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, they had a lot of things that were very, very good about it. And then they finally got it to where the speed was pretty good. But then... <laughs> See ya. Yeah, they pulled the plug. That, that is a problem. But you know what? You know who else does the same thing? Google. Google just says, oh, yeah. hey, we're killing, yeah. uh, uh, what was it? Piss. Picasso. Piss something. <laughs> Picasso. That was it. Yeah. All right. Hey, Kathy Perupski says, woo, better late than never. Hello, Kelby Gang and Matt Kluskowski. You know what I like about What's up, Kathy? people use your full name. They don't just go Matt. It's like Matt Kluskowski. You know how they spell it's it. It's like, you know, there's certain people who like Sinatra. You just, you know, share. But Matt Kluskowski, it's a full well, you name. Well, made, you made my name attainable for people to say. I did. You know how? Go ahead, say It's it. just one little sentence, Matt. <laughs> but it's a sentence that say made it. your name attainable. <laughs> Matt And rocking the house key, it's Matt Kluskowski. <laughs> and people got it. They did. I remember the first time Matt and I went to a video shoot, I was like, all right, help me with your name again. <laughs> like, we're at a video shoot. We're doing classes. I'm like, help me with your name. Yeah. And he's like, just call me Matt K. That's your website, right, Matt K? Matt K. I love the story of how you got that web. That Because how do you ever get something so short but Matt K? And you've got Lightroom training, Photoshop training, all kinds of stuff there. All kinds of stuff. Can we bring the site up? Can you pull it up there, Mayor? While we're doing that, uh, Melanie Kern Favilla, one of our very favorite people, says, let's all send Google a thank you email. Hey, believe me, Google's like, I'm so glad to have that, all that bad negativity off me. From, you know, they're like, they're happy, I am yeah. sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, Anki says, my latest update of Photoshop broke Nick for me, and I would love to have it back again. I've been without it for a couple of weeks. So there are, there are all obviously alternatives out there. Harley Pilot says, I was the winner of Matt's first photo walk in Hyde Park. Aww. So now, I, oh, they, okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, I just saw Matt's headline. Apparently, Nick is not well, dead. So I used, I like you, used gravestones for the image, and yeah. so I thought the apparent, the the appropriate. Oh, the hand image coming out of the grave. Coming back out of the grave. Yes, the, very uh, good. <laughs> anyway, that's mattk.com, and this is actually the man mattk.com sitting here. Jason Autry says, "I missed these two together." Oh, Jason. Some website stole my profile photo. Did they? There's a there's a DIY blogger. Yeah. That all of his accounts. 
He took my profile photo. Did he? He's stealing someone else's pictures of like interiors and everything like that. And he's his Pinterest account and his Facebook, all of his accounts have my profile photo. Is it your for like you? It's Matt? It's that picture. The, the picture of you? Phone. Yeah, that, the one that. Like that with the Peter Hurley shot? Yeah. And they say it's them? Yeah. I had someone do it with one of my books from China. I was pretty happy. He said he was 31 years old. So I'm like, oh, that's hey, good. my that's profile good. looks like I'm 31. David Good says, hey, it's Matt. And what's his name? <laughs> Hey, Jen, you didn't have to put that up. You didn't have to write that. <laughs> so can, can I give a closing thought, though? Yeah, but I got to show this picture. Okay. Then can you give oh, yeah, a closing yeah, yeah, thought? Yeah, yeah. All right. Take a look on screen here if I'm still connected to video control. All right. So this is a, a shot that I took in Lisbon with Cheeky Nando by my side. Cheeky Nando. And I want to show you my behind the scenes. It's not my behind the scenes. I think Peter Treadway or maybe Cheeky Nando took this and sent it to me. But look what I did. There was rope and stanchion, so you couldn't go in that part of the library. So I put my <laughs> platypod on the rope and stanchion. Now, notice it's off center in this picture. Yeah. And here it's perfectly centered. Do you know what I did? I took the rope and stanchion, I slid it over it. so it was centered in front of the table. But yeah, that, that, that is showing, that is me in Lisbon and in Morocco. That was, I, ne I, I carried my freaking tripod everywhere and I never used it a single time. Now, it doesn't mean I don't like You're tripods because I use person. I know, but but I it just the, this thing was so handier than I than I ever dreamed that it would be. I never thought it would get through yeah. a whole trip. But anyway, all right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Kleskowski is going to leave you with a, a closing <laughs> thought. It, it's it's actually a bad closing thought because oh, it, it's a bad it one. A conversation. No, because I was a conversation. I think you're going to agree. You know. All of these updates, like, you know, you get all the updates and everything like that, and everybody's giving it. You know what it's done is it's made software updates not fun anymore. Do you remember the days of, like, and, and any, anybody watching, you probably looked oh. forward to a Photoshop update. God, like, they were so exciting. It was. It was this, this huge event, and... You know, you got your new features, and, like, it was just exciting. There weren't public betas. Like, everybody does a public beta now, which yeah. basically it's we're not going to make a big event of our software launch. We're going to give it to you and then let you test it. And then when a new version comes out, actually nothing's new for you. So, it, like, even the public beta, like, they've killed all of the, the, the excitement around the software launch. I miss that. I know. Remember the Apple keynotes, how exciting that yeah. day was? And then the day that Photoshop came out, it was 25 features, and it was just blowing your mind. And I do. I missed the, I missed right. the, uh, I missed the big updates. Hey, Peter Treadway, who was one of Team Epic and was, was there with us in Lisbon, an awesome guy, uh, he says, that's my behind-the-scenes shot. Thank you, Peter Treadway, if that is your real name. Thank you for letting me use that. <laughs> All right, so well, we, we got to go. So here's yeah. the thing. Matt, you, you ended on a sour note. We can't end like that. So here's what I'd like to do. And Juan, and you're going to work with me on this. Are we going to sing again? No, I'm going to hum like the Battle Hymn of the Republic while you leave us with inspirational words. And when you get near the end, then Juan is going to take the jib, take us out, and Mary will like, take us to the ending credits. But I want us to end with an inspirational moment from Matt Kleskowski, okay. and I will hum behind it. So you can do like at the end of the movie mm -hmm. where like the president says this thing, yeah, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you give this okay. inspirational thing, okay. and then Juan used the jib. It's going to be epic. It's going to be a perfect okay. way to end it. But before we go, I do want to thank everybody for watching today. I want to thank everybody who tuned in, all the Kelby One members around the world who tuned in for our webcast today. Thanks to our sponsors, Platypod, and everybody else that's so awesome to us. And, um, Thank you for Peter Treadway. Oh, I wanted to show this video from Pisco. I guess I have to do it next week. I'll put it on my blog. Because I went to his Facebook page. His Facebook page. I went to his Facebook page. I went to his face. I went to his, because everybody's telling me it's on his Facebook page. I asked him. I sent him a note. And I said, do you have a link? And how long is it? He just came back and said, two minutes. He completely ignored, do you have a link? So I went to his Facebook page. You guys saw me working over here. Couldn't find the video. It was a two-minute video from the photo walk. We'll have to run it another day because Pisco, just because he's in the Army, doesn't have time to help out. All right. You know? <laughs> That's a negative note. We have to end on a positive note. <clears throat> Here we go. Let me get ready. Yeah, hold on. All right. Hold on. <laughs> we can't be laughing when we do it here. Okay. I'm not... <clears throat> I have a vision. 
<laughs> where <laughs> one day <laughs> all software companies <laughs> will unite. <laughs> all raw file formats <laughs> will unite <laughs> and not be DNG. <laughs> 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 where we as a company, as a unit, <laughs> as a as a <laughs> building. <laughs> can use the same software with the same tools to get the same beautiful results. That is my vision. Done. <laughs> this segment of The Grid is brought to you by Westcott, professional photo and lighting equipment. <laughs> 